Jean-Francois, nice to see you again. Richard, wonderful to see you as well. Thank you. You were amazing as always on that panel. Thank you. I wasn't there, but somebody told me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> so the panel was yes. about changes in distribution, changes in uh, regulation, with, uh, regulation, and advice. the impact exactly. Yes. So. One of the things I believe you highlighted or came up was the death of open architecture. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of concern about uh, the new regulation impacting the, 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 open dis the open platform that a lot of people have now in place. I, I don't really believe in it. I think that from a, a distribution point of view, it will be more a concentration of the architecture to a number of managers. So guided architecture. Much more guided architecture, probably not going back to completely captive. Right, but what about what we've been hearing today mm -hmm. is it's not just guided architecture, it's the repackaging of the managers and the whole concept that maybe instead of promoting individual funds, a distributor set up fund of mandates, so you disintermediate the manager further. Exactly, yes. Do that's you, think, one of, that's you see that happening? That could be happening and actually this will be a, it will be one of the ways for the distributors as well as the managers to actually get into the revenue stream they're going to be losing with the new um, regulations regarding retrocession, MIFID 2 and, and all that stuff. Yes. Okay, well I'm going to have to pick you up on that. Okay, yes. so are you representing a distributor today, yes? I am a, I am a distributor, You're yes. So from that standpoint, now, you need to re replace the revenues exactly. through MIFID 2. Yes. Um, and I can understand how that would work when you set up a fund and you use mm -hmm. mandates, mm -hmm. but does the manager, the asset manager actually end up earning less or more? Probably I would say less. Probably less in the yeah. end, yes. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people would be paying that. Actually, one of the comments that was made is who is going to pay at the end of the day for this uh, new regulation? And in my view, it's going to be the client because we'll find both the asset managers as well as the distributors a way to compensate for the loss so of So what uh, happened to this whole wonderful thing about bringing fees down, the end client benef benefiting from lower fees? Is that not the point of the regulation? That was probably the point of the regulation. Is it going to happen? I doubt it. Okay, that's, that's, that's challenging for our yes. industry when, when we still have that problem. Now, what about, you know, obviously RDR in the UK, mm -hmm. MIFID 2, and then maybe mm -hmm. a version of RDR spreading yes. mm -hmm. across Europe and elsewhere. Yes. Um, surely that eventually will lead to lower fees because you will end up with an R share class or a more institutional share class. So then that's where maybe the, package, the, the, packa the, packaging. the packaging comes into play where in fact what you look at, what, and we've been doing that ourselves in Italy and exporting that now to, to Germany, whereby we're packaging, you know, we're offering the clients a, a service which includes fund selections, but also they only pay one fee. So it's a wrap, a wrap it's, fee. it's basically a yeah. wrap fee. Okay. What we're also doing is removing a number of costs which are associated with trading, with a number of other yeah. activities, and they only have one fee. That seems to be very, very well accepted by the clients. Now, is that a total fee, including the fee within the funds? Yes. Well, then, no. then the and client does benefit from that approach, mm -hmm. unless the fee is really, really high. No, 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 absolutely <laughs> not. What, what, what we have done also in Germany, for instance, is move the clients into institutional share classes so they actually are not being impacted by the retrocession. And that, that to me, I mean, obviously, but I'm looking from a, a manufacturing mm -hmm. standpoint, I think it's hugely important mm -hmm. that we start to reduce the fees in these packaged products. Exactly. And, you know, I, I work in the US, as you know, and mm -hmm. the wrap fee is a very common approach. Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. and well, we're starting to see that now in Europe as well. Which I think is a, is a, it's a very good thing, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, is this driven by regulation, do you think, or is this driven by, I mean, obviously regulation is that maybe at the start of it, or is it a recognition in the industry we need, we need to change? I think it's a recognition at all levels that we need to change. I mean, I know from a distribution standpoint, we know that we need to clarify, make uh, our product offering simpler, more transparent to the clients. And especially in a private bank environment where the multiplicity of the fees is, is there, try to have a pricing structure that's simpler and easier for the client to understand, that's definitely been a driving force for us. So we're finally putting the client at the center of our business? Well, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> little by little. I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> Thank you very much. With the client. With the client, absolutely. Yes. Thank you.